Good afternoon. Uh, let me start by welcoming uh, everybody to this event organized by the Department of International Relations and European Studies and the Asia Research Initiative at CEU. Uh, when we first start to think about the lecture on the Korean Peninsula, we thought that uh, your coming and the timing of your coming here would be timely because of events that were planned in South Korea. So the parliamentary event, uh, elections that took place uh, last week and the forthcoming presidential elections. Mm -hmm. But when we start, started to think about your visit and your lecture here, what we couldn't foresee was the sudden leadership change in North Korea, given mm -hmm. that North Korea had got us used to continuity rather than change. So um, in an unforeseen manner, uh, your, your visit and your talk here today is extremely timely. So uh, for those who uh, do not know, uh, Yonga, Professor Kim is a professor at the College of Asia and the Pacific at Australian National University in Canberra. And she has written extensively on a number of topics, but uh, particularly she's a leading scholar in um, the, the phase during which South Korea industrialized and developed rapidly in the 1960s and 70s, and particularly and in her work, First of King focuses on uh, the Park Chung Hee era. Uh, on this, she has uh, published a whole range of uh, monographs, volumes, book chapters, articles, more recently, a chapter in a uh, book that has just appeared for Harvard University Press edited by uh, Kim Jong-un and Ezra Pogba. Um, so, thank you uh, for, for being with us uh, and thank the audience. And with this, I will appear in the background and uh, leave it to it. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you so much. Well, let me thank you first before uh, anything else. And thank you for coming here to see, well, to greet me. And then we thank you, Dr. Professor Pimo Gregory and Professor King, uh, to invite me. Actually, as I said just before, I didn't realize Budapest was this far, far away, particularly from Australia, uh, much further than what I have ever imagined. So if I wasn't so ignorant as I am, I don't think I would have said yes. But I, being here and yesterday, I had walked the, along the river and I was deeply moved by your beautiful city. And it is a great pleasure and honor to be here, particularly in you know, Central University, European Central Universities, this uh, East Asia Initiative Program. I couldn't emphasize strongly enough how important it is for anybody, even in Europe, and even in Hungary, to uh, familiarize the politics of East Asia right now. Never before in the history of modern history of development, East Asia is so crucial uh, for every country to understand what is happening in world politics. So having said that, uh, today my presentation is, so, uh, is mainly to do the leadership transition in the peninsula. And as uh, Professor Fumagalli just mentioned, I didn't plan this thing, but just happened to be, this year is the extraordinary year both sides of both South Korea and North Korea, leadership is being changed. So, and as well as, I'll go a little bit detail in a minute, that the world leaders in America and in China and uh, are, um, are changing, and in France, and Japan's case, they have been changing their leader every six months. So it's not really a big news. They will change another one. So having said that, understanding this, how this peninsula issue in terms of leadership change uh, will help you greatly how this superpower is really working 
in, in, together with the connected. So, mainly these South Korea and North Korea's leaders are like this. As you know so well, that left is in Park, South Korea, and North is Kim Jong un. Now, this uh, South Korea has got three contenders. Uh, on the left is, um, I'll explain again, daughter of a dictator, Park jong hee And so this woman is right now, is the most popular right now in South Korea. This man is a professor and CEO, and he's an engineer. And actually, he's a trained medical trainer, medical doctor, uh, who invented antivirus called on antivirus and he distri distributes the free of charge. That's how he came into Korean society and now he's absolutely capturing younger generations' hearts and mind and he became like a, a, what they call unwind phenomenon. And this man is a uh, moon, so pop an moon, the yeah, thermodynamic. And the moon is a chief of a former chief of a staff for, uh, from uh, of a former president, a non uh, who so threw himself on the creek. So this is now South Korea's contenders in December. And this is Kim Jong-un, uh, and this is Kim Il-sung, and this is Kim Jong-un's father, Kim Jong-il. So I'll be talking about this mainly these people. Now, since we have got only a um, small crowd, let me just very briefly uh, and talk with a particular format. I'll just explain the, what is the really key question that I like to really um, emphasize about. And then I'll give you a little bit of an overview on both sides, the domestic overview and international context. And then I'll talk about these trends in both sides of Korea and the implications of that trends. And then I'll draw a conclusion. Um, the key question is really, and we have to ask, what does the really, why does Korean peninsula matter in the world, and in a particularly uh, in world politics as well as in regional politics in East Asia. And what are these prevailing trends in both sides of Korea uh, in terms of people's reaction towards this, their each um, respective leader? And what will be the implications of these new leaders? And I would like to also briefly mention about what are the new trends of these two new leaders. Because you see, societies have got a different set of trends naturally leadership style is changing. That, so these four questions I will be mentioning um, in this uh, talk. In, I will just, um, in Korea, uh, both sides of Korea couldn't be different right now. 1948 divided, but in South Korea, its government had been changed nine different times, and the Imeon Bak is a ninth one. <coughs> And South Korea is roughly about 50 million, and income is about 20,000. This is now because it's an American led financial crisis, their actually GDP has been reduced. But this year uh, is about 21,000. Um, and it is the 15th largest economy in the world. And South Korea is, when I just said, um, um, one view, then South Korea is probably you, the country you have to seek to believe. In terms of technology, the, it is the density of mobile phones is number one in the world. That is absolutely democracy is burgeoning and regarded as is a beacon of democracy in East Asia. On the other hand, uh, these North Korea is, as you know, the third generation inherited leadership. So Kim Il-sung, 1948, and then, then Kim Jong-il, last year he died, and now Kim Jong-un. 
and population is about half of South Korea. And there, uh, this GDP um, is, per capita income is about 19 times smaller than South Korean per capita. And it's one of the most close country, and yet it is a nuclear country. Now that's where nuclear country state, country with 1.2 million armies. That's where now problem really comes. We, when we look at this uh, um, international perspective, as I said just earlier, why Korea matters? And my response is, historically speaking, Korea has been the stage for world superpower power game. Uh, the Korean national division itself was really between Soviet then Soviet Union versus this uh, America's Cold War division. And ever since then, what is known as the Korean pro uh, program. And well, 2012 being this transition of world leadership, simply speaking, unless Korean program is dissolved, particularly North Korean nuclear issue is dissolved, there isn't security or prosperity guaranteed in East Asia. Meaning, real bottom line here is really, it's not Korean Peninsula problem, it's South and North Korea problem only. This is more to do with a superpower, China versus Korea. So it's really to do with how two superpower is actually coming to terms with this change of world politics. Now, Coming to this leader, uh, leadership change, Kim Jong-un is, they are not really sure, so sure. They are known, he is known as 29 years old, but no one is so sure. He could be 28 or could be 29, even he could be 30. And he just, during last week was the most historical. Within three days, he became the first chairman of the party and chairman of the military committees. And also, he is now first, what they call, first general secretary of the Workers' Party. So, and designating his father, Kim Jong-il, as the eternal general secretary, eternal chairman. So, Kim Jong-un is now looking at uh, his leadership succession has been in format completely. Now, here is Chang sang tak and this Kim Kyung hee is Kim Jong Il's sister, and these two pair are, at the moment, known to be the real behind Kim Jong Il. So, no, nobody knows, in terms of their hierarchy ranking, what high ranking they are holding. So it is very much to do with how these people are now yielding the power. Now these people are the key members of right now Kim Jong Un system. Where is now in, in, in this South Korea? Parkne just finished this another. Parkne party is what we call New World Party, and they just finished the general election. Before general election, the whole country was completely swayed against the um, ruling party. Uh, so her party was estimated that they would be very, very having a hard time even to achieve 100 seats out of 300. And yet out of expectation, she secured 152. So she won, absolutely won. That, that means now her position for the December election is going to, presidential election is, is much higher. And behind her, South Korea's conservatives are all unanimously behind her. Whereas in this opposition that these two men are, uh, this, this man just now said that two uh, conflicting uses, he finally decided to enter 
December presidential election. That's one uh, one news. And then the other news will say, no, we didn't say that. So we don't really know, but we, I personally suspect that he might come in enter the entering presidential election. However, I personally think his times, even though he is very popular among 20s and 30s generation, I don't think he has got uh, that much overwhelming popularity as he once had a few months ago. Now, this moon is, as I said, that he was a chief of the staff uh, of the president, Nomi Hyun. And he is a founding member of the United Democratic United Party. And their campaign slogan is economic democratization. That's what they are uh, um, campaigning. Uh, difficulty here is, oh, this is now, OK, oh, here. Now, you have to look at these two camps in two this in this context, this is oh, <laughs> this is a, that I am so good at. Oh, no. This is a dictator, pattern here, and this is the man and entered with a military coup in 1961. And 63 to 79, he was assassinated. And during his 18 years of war rule, he made what South Korea is today. So this man is hated by half of the nation and adored by half of the nation. So her, his voters' popularity is fixed. About 30% of the nation's voters are behind her. Large reason is because of this man. Now, he really campaigned his economy first pa paradigm. This paradigm, this strategy, was adopted by China and today's. Ting Jiaoping adopted his policy, and today's Chinese spectacular development is largely due to these Chinese bureaucrats adopting Korean model. But 1990s, they gave a credit of 2012, they denied that. Uh, he is a stand for rapid industrialization, and he is absolutely anti-communist. The, the irony here is that he personally had been involved in the Communist Party in 1948, and he was sentenced to lifetime sentence. Uh, it's a long story, very controversial uh, fellow. Now, this was a President Nomian who um, threw himself um, to the creek behind his house and he died in 2010, 2008, not 9, 10. I interviewed, I'm the last person who interviewed and I can't publish my last interview with him because this election became mainly conservative camp symbolizing Pakistan's ideology versus Nomian's camp, progressive camp, symbolizing this man's this participatory democracy with economic democratization. That doesn't mean he actually practiced it, by the way. Now, having said that, this trend is basically North Korea's trend is uh, Kim Jong-un's succession is so far very solid. And I could go say, even before Kim Jong-un died, obviously he very, very organized after when he dies, what would be taking place one at a time. Now, Kim Jong-un's utmost duty here is maintaining Kim Il-sung's original ideology of Chuche, self-reliance ideology, and plus so-called Kim Jong Il, his father's ideology called Songun. Songun means is military first. It is. It was a policy as well as ideology. And Kim Jong Il reshuffled the military, and so military is pretty much under Kim Jong Un's now system. However, uh, as you um, probably all watched, it, North Korea. Um, launched this long-range rocket, 
which only flew less than two minutes and very little. Does that matter? Uh, yes and no. Where you, how you look at it, uh, from an outside point, point of view, yes, um, it was a great embarrassment and they failed. But from the inside of North Korea, it doesn't matter much. From their country's point of view, they have progressed their technological development immensely. And behind these failed rockets, the real issue here is now they are all predicting these nuclear machine missile tests. And they are counting it. And if we look at past twice uh, experience, that will be more likely. So it is really the question of when will um, the day is announced yet, <coughs> or um, go ahead of this nuclear test, third test. Now, on the, the other hand, the society's level is absolutely, as you know, when the food crisis is absolutely critical and top of the malnutrition. This is why June, this, uh, um, June what month is this? Oh, uh, this is uh, April. April. So um, North Korea and US, six weeks ago when they agreed it, the North and US um, offered 24,000 tons of AIDS nutrition, which had been um, canceled. Uh, the malnutrition problem is so bad, the latest news is North Korean soldiers' height has been reduced from 145 centimeters to 143 centimeters high. That is equivalent of a South Korean primary school fourth-year student's height. It's malnutrition. That's absolute evidence. That much this food um, crisis is serious, and the malnutrition is um, serious, and yet the peoples are very, very of about Kim Jong-un. They don't know who Kim Jong-un is. Even workers' party member apparently don't know who really is. And yet, these North Korea, uh, North Korean um, people, more than a million are, are using mobile phones. That means they are, have got far better technological medium, means to hear outside the news. And they apparently like to watch South Korea's these soap operas very much. And so the change is still uh, um, very, very uh, obvious in North Korea. On the other hand, in South Korea, trend is Society and the grass level is a far serious than politi political level, level. In North Korea, this whole state level is absolutely control is the number one at all costs. And the social change is behind it. Whereas in South Korea, whether politicians are doing anything, already society is way ahead of it, changes up there, particularly this widespread, what we call anti-MB phenomenon. MB is a stand for present union box, initial, myung pa, MB. So, um, 20th and 30th generations, this dislike is beyond any man's imagination. And particularly, they are saying, now, we are not really giving any credit towards the politicians or our political parties. This is where this uh, Professor An is coming into. Anyone but politicians, anyone but political parties is welcome. That's what the Korean trend, society's trend is at the moment. And the public is absolutely angry. Angry, uh, and they are angry at also Chabot. Do you know what is a Chabot? The conglomerates, Samsung's and LG's, Hyundai's. They are saying this, uh, this uh, conglomerate monopolized power system has to be dismantled. That's what the younger generation is calling for. Political level is now, because of that social extraordinary trend, the political level is now, both parties are calling for, they are promoting this welfare, creating welfare state. 
both opposition parties and conservative parties are promising. Conservative parties are is, um, promising uh, about $84 billion worth of welfare program, whereas progressive pro um, um, party is promising about $153 billion worth of welfare program. So one way or the other, the political climate is changed in South Korea as well as polit politicians' behavior and the rhetoric change. Implications then what happens? The way I look at it, this year is, as you know, a uh, hundredth anniversary year of Kim Il-sung's um, birth. This is why it's yesterday, parade, in a minute I'll show you the photo, uh, was so spectacularly shown. And they claimed, the self claimed about this arrival of uh, Kang Sung Taeg. Kang Sung Taeg is actually, just literally speaking, it's a strong and rich country. And that is the uh, ideology that Kim Jong-il had been promised. 2012 will be the beginning of the beginning year of Council Great Nation. Now, this is where Kim Jong Un is now declaring uh, this Council table into a system. In other words, he's now inheriting his father and grandfather's ideology, self-reliance Chuche and Songun politics, and plus Council table policy. But uh, at the same time, Kim Jong Un has to solve this food crisis and malnutrition problem. Nevertheless, Kim Jong Un at all costs can't fall to look weak. He's got to look strong. And this is where these yesterday is these launching of missile and outsiders are keep looking at it is just a failure but underneath that message is not really just face value of failed rockets you know, test. International context is really not one word. Um, again, US, Korea, North Korea all got into another this dilemma. What do you do? So there are still very strong arguments that we have to, why don't we chastise North Korea. Personally, North Korea is not going to be doing anything by this punishment measure because they have been punished for the last 60 years and they have trained to be a survivor of punishment from the West for the last 60 years. So I don't personally think that punishment, punishment measure alone is going to be making any difference. So, this yesterday, of the 30th, two days ago, there is a rocket launch, failed one even. A lot of people are, are saying this is a cover test of a missile technology. Yes and no. We can't prove. They in, insist, as long as they are insisting that that was a purely rocket um, launching or missile, um, um, nothing to do with the missile test, uh, we can't really prove until they do the third test. Um, to me, uh, this by launching this um, rocket, North Korea demonstrated one thing. Kim Jong Un is doing exactly <coughs> what his father did and where he left off. Meaning that he's not going to change. The system is the same. So U.S. and uh, China, U.S., Japan, and South Korea has to come up with a radical idea to deal with uh, North Korea punishment measure they have tried. And it, it doesn't work. And we all know, apparently this two days ago, a uh, rocket launch cost $840 million. That was the entire nation's food, one year food, apparently, cost. And yet they are quite happy to do so. So we can't read 
what they are doing in from our modern or our own commonsensical ideas. We have to look at it from their perspective. And the way I look at it is Kim Jong-un is doing exactly what Kim Jong-un, his father, has left off. Now, it comes here, China's. Of course, China has got multiple, multiple implications. Uh, Kim Jong-un, firstly, Kim Jong-un's system has to be stable for the sake of China's interest. China invested enormously economically. And so they want North Korea to be stable, and they have got economic um, interest, and they want North Korea to cooperate with their program, and also they have got a war. They have got security interests, particularly North Korea as a buffer of this power shift. Whether US like it or not, already China needs enormous power. So it's a question of whether US is willing to give and share the power in East Asia uh, or how much it needs <coughs> So that power balance, how that power balance is coming to sort of adjust it, the rest will just have to fit in. That's how we see it. In South Korea's implication, on the other hand, as I said, already general elections in, of April, general elections is completely the reversed. Uh, and so expectation is now all of a sudden this uh, I mean uh, society loads of this current president president and absolutely that we thought the um, ruling party doesn't have a chance. But Pakenham made or they use now miracle, but it is not a miracle. Simply, opposition party doesn't have any vision or any plan, and all they wanted was less punishment as a ruling party, and didn't work. So there is a society level has got this extraordinary change in transformation is already on the way, and so this welfare state uh, creation and is now shaping. And depending on this December election, how this ruling party and the progressive party is actually selling this their campaign strategy. But uh, chance is Pakenes, this Hungary, um, Hungary this, if I translate this Hungary into English, it becomes a new world party. And she is now campaigning. Let's have a fundamental change. And let's have this the, um, economy and become more democratized. democratized. So she actually sabotaged the progressive campaign, and progressive doesn't have the, anything better to sell. So it might, in December election, it is any, any man's game, but I would uh, probably Read, unless progressive um, camp has a radically different strategy with a united team, because the internal is so much of um, factional disputes, uh, it looks like uh, um, ruling party Ms. Pa uh, might have a great opportunity to become a president than what we ever thought. Um, in, in terms of this, Chain, call for change, concert is a progressive camp intellectual led. Uh, concert and progressive camp is calling for total change. They call what they call 2011 raging. Oh. <laughs> I'm always so. Uh, 2011 change. This is a very significant term. 1987, South Korea democratized. So what they call, they call it 87 regime. Ever since then, the regime is, government has been changed so many times, but the regime has not changed. Now, meaning using this 2000, 
and certainly raging. They are what they are saying is let's get rid of economy first policies altogether. So because so far economy is really doing well. The nationwide level is doing very well. It just doesn't come to the people level. So they are saying, no, we don't want to have this state level economic development. We want to have coming down to the people level. So unless it's what's in it for us, we're not going to vote for you. So before I can come to a conclusion, let me show you this is yesterday's paper. Probably you, will, you haven't seen it. This is now, this is Kim Jong Nam, second man. And uh, I was hoping if I was very good at handling uh, this uh, um, uh, embedding program, I could have turned this one. But Kim Jong Nam, this 29 year old young lad, was uh, giving a delivery speech. And surprisingly, South Koreans are very excited to say, tell people, ah, oh, Kim Jong-un has a very beautifully low tone and calm voice. What do they think? He's a great man or something? He's a perfectly normal, normal man and he's sweetly educated and he probably does not know what is really starvation himself. Now, can you see these? Here, April 15th. No country on earth has such a magnificently orchestrated um, techniques and discipline what North Korean has in terms of parade. No one can do it. See, it really shows uh, uh, one thing about North Korea's priority. No matter how we suppress them, they're not going to give up their nuclear state because they genuinely believe that their nuclear development was the, the reason why they have survived. So they're not going to um, give up. And this is why I personally believe that US, and unfortunately US can't, Obama government can't really, even if he wishes, can't come up with a radical uh, different approach or our policy at this year, because this is his election year. He can't, so we just have to wait until elections are over. Then we might have a some chance to see a real change in US. But as I said just before, unless China and US is actually settling in this Northeast Asia, particularly peninsula issue, I don't think this is just simply South and North Korea's issue at all. This is why six-party talk didn't work at all. Now, let me conclude in these three terms, control, change, and challenge. The control is really more applicable to North part, and change is the South part, and the challenge is both sides. That doesn't mean that North Korea is only control and there is no change. I don't mean that. Just predominantly speaking, North Korea, for time being, will put absolute priority on the control, at any cost control. And the South Korea politicians, whether they like it or not, the change is already gone, it's already taken place. So there will be a true, almost another revolutionary size of scale of the changes taking place in South Korea and naturally political leadership in both sides of the peninsula have to have this new challenge how they can actually work together. Now I personally think if regardless whether ruling party uh, candidate Ms. Park or a progressive party candidate would take over this being elected in December. <coughs> in terms of dealing with North Korea, tactic will have to change more open mind. Mainly because South Koreans seeing last year's two incidents, one is a Navy ship sinking incident and the other one is island being near Seoul, island being in Vietnam, bombarded. 
they are absolutely made abundantly clear to this current government. You are single-handedly fault why this is so unstable. So we want you to talk to North Korea. So regardless whether conservative takes part and pre become president or a progressive uh, candidate becomes president, there will be their inter-Korean policies will be, I suspect, far more, let's say, more dialogue, or will be more dialogue than it's been under this current president in Yonba. Well, thank you so much. I hope that this was really made some sense. Did I use up too much of time? No, no. Perfect. Now, I'll be very happy to um, um, answer your know, if you any of you have got any questions. Thank you very much uh, for taking us on a journey, on a fascinating journey uh, to the Korean Peninsula. Uh, I have a couple of questions myself, but before I do, Sure. Yeah. Could you just introduce yourself yes, briefly okay. and then? Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kim. First of all, and thank you for the possibility. My name is Samuel Stokace, and I work for the Hungarian government. Together with my colleagues, we come from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So please take my question as a question coming from a government officer. Uh, however, we are very much interested in your assessment, and uh, thank you very much for. Uh, providing us the opportunity to listen to this uh, evaluation. Uh, two things I'm interested in, uh, subsequent to this uh, failed uh, satellite orbit launch or, or a rocket uh, ballistic missile test, uh, whichever you like. Uh, now we see that in the United Nations there is a very strong consideration how to respond and whether to uh, endorse a resolution which also implies sanctions. Yes. However, for the time being, we do not see any consensus on that. And the majority of the international community expects uh, some regional powers mm -hmm. to extort enough influence <coughs> on North Korea not to go ahead with uh, some further uh, certain development which might uh, increase the tension. Yes. Uh, Many sources, many analysts refer to a, a, a possible nuclear mm. uh, yes. test, underground test. How do you see the, the prospects? Because many, many people expect that uh, eventually the North Korean leadership will be convinced not to go ahead with that, which certainly result in a much stronger response from the UN and the international community as a whole. So my first question. There's another one, which refers to South Korea. Uh, last week we, we saw the outcome of the elections, which to the surprise of many, uh, eventually strengthened the, the present uh, political uh, party group in, in, in power in, in, uh, in South Korea. I could see on your, on your slides that uh, economic modernization yes. and the social development are the zeitgeist of uh, mm -hmm. today's South Korean politics. How do you see that? Thank you very much. First, your, your first question about this would do North Korea and, and the third nuclear test. I'll come I'll answer first one more. I personally think so. Um, it's just a matter of time. The main re reason I say is because, as you probably are aware, even China uh, or the Russia are uh, all joined condemning North Korea's behavior. But China has uh, this condemnation towards North Korea's these nuclear um, launching activities has, unless as long as it doesn't have the real measure and just talks about this verbal testification, it won't work any at all. But I personally think that China is doing exactly that. You naughty boy, don't do that. Hmm? But that's it. Look at last year, when China Navy ship was sank, absolutely South Korea utilized the utmost, utmost 
utmost effort trying to convince UN uh, um, and behind them, particularly China. But China utilized its people. And when crunch came, Chinese made, China made it absolutely clear we are behind North Korea. So this one too. China will chastise. China will say, you naughty boy, don't do that. But it doesn't do anything. So China is the one who is giving North Korea oil and minimum level of food. So even though a million people had been starved, died, China is still uh, supplying the most urgent things. So North Korea's survival is largely dependent depending on Chinese, this generosity, and also cooperation. And the way I look at it, and as many, many um, scholars are unfortunate, you see, yes, it will not change. So as long as China and Russia will utilize their veto in UN, nothing is not going to make any difference. And this is why coming back to what I have said, this is more to those North is 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 this this security related power readjustment between US on, on the one hand and China on the other. So they really have to talk, as you know too well. Peninsula had been two superpowers stage in from well, South Korea, the, the, the Korean Peninsula's history is thousand years old. Um, had been China had been the the um, master, and when that was finished, the reason finished was because Japan and China had a war, and Japan won, so Japan took over, and China, Korea became colonized for thirty six years. After that, what happened? American occupation was three years. So this 20th century Korean history is really the history of a superpower having a little power juggling in the peninsula. This is why I say, I think unfortunately, North Korea will test the third one. This is why before they the third test, America, along with China, has to have radically different approach and come up with a genuinely workable political solution. Otherwise, this lip service is not going to make any difference. On the second question about these South Korea's presidential election, and that's It's a fascinating work. The red is a conservative party victory. And the yellow is the progressive one. It should have been the other way around. We all thought so. But practically, this dictator's Parkness, uh, can we go back to this if I can? Um, how do we go back to very fast? Um, yeah, keep on, keep on. Keep on. So, yeah. Do I have to do this? Is there any faster to go? Oh, here, yeah. Um, Let's even go even first on front page. Oh. I'm so ignorant in technology, I don't think if this is a life is a technology. This pumpkin hand single handedly made a just whole game changed. So um, even though this answer so is uh, it's like a, a, it's it's a um, unpredictable figure, but actually, ma nearly two months ago, he donated a, a huge sum of money, and whole nations, younger generation, twenties and thirties generations, absolutely mesmerized by him. At that time, if he actually put forward and said, "Okay, I'm going to come up." And in this general election, in election, if we really run, he would have had a chance. But we, I along with the other people, we think this man just going is uh, not clear about, ambiguous about his activities or his decision. 
I think his time was bit gone off. And this one too. Is it, this man doesn't have much of credential as a candidate. If we have to compare this one and this one right now, this morning's popularity is this one is 47 and a half, and this is a 42 and eight. But I personally think this woman was she was only 23 years old when her mother was at, um, assassinated. So 20. Three years old young lady, she's not this year 60 years. She has trained for the last over 30 years political games. So I don't think she, <coughs> he or he or any man in Korea at the moment has got political maneuver, uh, 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 maneuvering skills or experience as she does and also I happen to know her for the last 20 years and I have to tell you she is not just a daughter of a dictator she has got fun she's charismatic and she is absolutely uh, determined and top of that she doesn't owe to anybody so if she becomes a president she can actually do a, a quite radical reform because she doesn't owe anything from anyone. And that's how I read it. Does that make sense? Yes, okay. I also have a question. Uh, when you mentioned this year, zeitgeist of today is on uh, economic democratization and social justice, I, I truly believe that. Because on the other, you know, this age I mentioned, the physical populism is the zeitgeist of uh, Korea at the moment, internet activity and people having power in the center. You're right, um, both parties, progressive and conservative parties, they both, you know, raise their you know, voice over this welfare system, saying we're going to uh, increase welfare system. And, but I wonder how they going to balance this high economic performance at the state level and also at the same time, you know, uh, distribution to people without telling us where they're going to raise this revenue to distribute equally to the rest of people at the same time having high performance of the economy in the, in the world economy. So if they have any opinion on that. Uh, it's, it's and that's where I really um, I'm interested this um, and this man is saying let's use common sense so he's going around all these different universities and in the name of the youth cap okay and he's giving a talk and say oh youngsters don't get pawned by these politicians promises it's absolutely groundless I can say groundless because as he has pointed out so well if you want to make a more, bake more cake, then we need more flour, don't we? With us, I mean, they, nobody's saying we are going to raise tax. So unless they, they raise tax, uh, there isn't going to be any extra revenue to come out. So both party, whether Pakan is a promise or what is a, cons and a progressive Moon Jae-in party, so United the Democratic, United the Party's promise, it doesn't matter as long as they don't tell their people how and where the extra material will come out, which they haven't said. So this is just one of those fancy promises. And this is why now um, Anjay in Hans case is saying, OK, don't give any vote to blatant rubbish promises. So don't take it too seriously. However, I still think, uh, still there's no way Korea can just do nothing. Because the society is just, society's the mood has changed so much. For their sake of their own survival, all the political parties, they have to have some these welfare measure. And that's where uh, probably not that big scale, but there will be a change and welfare system. You get a, Australia is um, 
in terms of GDP, very compatible to Korea. We are, Australia is ranking number 14, 14th, and South Korea is 15th. And yet, no Australian crazy politician will say, we'll give uh, all primary school, middle school, high school students a free lunch. That's what Korean government is actually promising it. And the university uh, tuition will be hard. No, no politician in Australia is saying that. And if anybody says like that, we would say, is he, has he gone mad? So South Korea is at the moment has gone way be beyond their credibility in terms of promise. But I suspect it will come down a little bit, I think. Uh, I also have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one stems from uh, my ignorance about South Korean politics. <laughs> and it's more of a curiosity. Um, you said just earlier that it doesn't owe anything to anybody. Um, I wonder if you could say a bit more about the relationship between her and the Chebol, particularly when you said that, well, should she become president, then she could, in principle, introduce changes that would be so radical that could actually change presumably Korean politics, society, and economy. So I wonder if you could say a few things about that. And the second question is about North Korea. Uh, over the last couple of days, we we hinted a bit about possible roles played by that, that the European Union could uh, play in the region. And I wonder whether you see anything beyond the usual food aid provider, which is normally what the European Union does when it comes to North Korea, sends a bit of food aid, but then not much on top of it. I mean, do you have anything else in mind in terms of what Brussels could do uh, with regard to? Um, this is very interesting that we, when, when we look at, let's look at um, 1995 almost. 1995, North Korea was talking about this nuclear test, okay? So from 1995 almost to 2012, US with all that intelligence power, with all that money, with all that um, uh, network, they negotiated with North Korea, but we can all have this admit who got the most North Korea. Because US keep, um, uh, 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 even though US and Japan and Korea, uh, they all have got their own set of these preconditions. If you don't do this, we are not going to do this. Japan's case, if you don't talk about this, resolving these abductive issues, we are not going to talk. The US is saying if you don't clear come clear out of this nuclear plan, we are not going to talk. In Myanmar's case, if you don't apologize, the China incident is saying that we are not going to talk. North Korea, have a look at it. Even though they say, okay, you want to punish us, punish us, they're just doing it. The same here is 1995 almost to today, the real the brainers got the real substance, something was North Korea. And now we are asking, what do they really want? In terms of what America, the U.S. that the North Korea is asking to U.S. hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. They are saying, you, in a written writing, guarantee us our own survival. And then, after that, you give us food. And they are saying, we're not going to um, bomb you, uh, uh, but we're not going to write it in a written guarantee. And this is the thing, you see. The thing is, um, in, Austra in national, Australian National University, there is a very, very radical academic called Gavin McCormack. Hmm. Very dear friend of mine. Uh, I don't agree with the, his argument, all of them, but in this issue, I have to admit, he's right. What he's saying here is, during the last 60 years, no country on earth has been suffering so heavily or consistently of nuclear threat on the US threat 
they are not North Korea. So if we have to say it, North Korea may not be, uh, 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 may not have anything, and that is really evil country. And yet, they have got one thing we don't have, that is experience surviving for the last 60 years on the US bomb threats and nuclear threats. And this is why, unless they give, US gives something other than food, I don't think North Korea is going to be saying, okay, we're going to stop all these nuclear tests and everything, and they will come clean. I don't think so. The food is just something they want, but food isn't everything from their perspective. That's how I see it. And, and, and your first question about this, uh, uh, whether if and when this uh, Pakman uh, can, um, becomes a president, would she be able to reform Chebo? And what's the relationship with the Chebo? I'll tell you, her relationship, this is a, her strength as well as her weakness. That is, inability to trust anybody. She trusts no one. Why? Because she was only 23 years old, a young woman, when she saw her mother being done down, and five, five years later, her father was gone down. So, all these years, she saw and she lived life of this political life where nobody is worth a trust. One thing, and on top of that, she doesn't have any relations with any of her conglomerates. Uh, she doesn't get on with her Samsung, she doesn't have any connection to LG or Hyundai or Shosun or any conglomerate. There is no even tiny bit of a scandal involving this woman to any money line. And this is why she is in that, in that regard. She's almost a place uh, clean as a whistle. But that doesn't mean she will be able to reform. That's another matter. To me, she, I don't know, I don't think it personally, I don't think she will do radical reform of the structure. However, what she will do right now is this morning's newspaper is that her, this uh, um, the, 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 the supporting team is four men, Wisconsin University PhDs, all economic degree PhDs. They are now already on the way doing and trying to form a new plan to eliminate Cheba giving entire this new you know, sort of exclusive contract to their children's company. So Samsung has got their sons and daughters and nephews and everybody and this um, conglomerate is giving contract to deliberately monopolizing it, giving their children. Now, they are going to introduce, has already promised, they are going to introduce a new law to eliminate that. So that sort of a thing, she will do so, but I don't think she will do fundamentally a terrible structure reforming, because you see, Korean travel is, whether you like it or not, they are absolutely strong. They survived the dictator. Dictator, actually, this is the contradiction of, this is now a contradiction of South Korean developmental model. This dictator trained these old chattels how to survive, even in Manchukuo. See, as you probably know, dictator himself was a Manchukuo soldier. So a bunch of soldiers has got one thing very, very distinctive character. That is, wherever they land, they had to survive. So they had to eat raw things and they survived. Dictator taught these Korean travelers to survive, never to surrender and survive. That's what Korean travelers are. Korean travelers are, even if you hate certain elements of their um, structure. They are strong survivors. They are far more innovative than Japanese. This morning, Sony was in BBC News 
Sony apparently in the 80s, even 90s, had an extraordinary share of this electronic market in the world market. Now it has come on less than 2% or something like that. And the fundamental flaw in Japanese company, Sony, is apparently <laughs> they are not innovative thinkers. South Korean channels are very competitive and very innovative. And I don't think any political man politicians, individual banks, will have that power or strength to restructure South Korean terror structure at all. By the way, Samsung's case, there's a saying, Samsung is not now uh, bribing any politicians. That's a true unsophisticated bribing system. What it does is, Samsung created this exuberant grant scholarship program. <coughs> There isn't any thinking man, upper echelon Korean society, who hasn't received one state or another, apparently Samsung-related grants. So you are the, they are the <coughs> children of a Samsung conglomerate. So whether you go to the high court, or you go to assembly, national assembly, or you go to universities, it is a Samsung men are everywhere. That's the truth. It's a horrendous issue. So if there are no other questions, let me thank you uh, for sharing your thoughts for very interesting lecture and the audience for the questions. Thank you so thank much. You. I'm greatly honored. And I am particularly grateful that your busy people from the ministry come here and um, share your thoughts with me. I will carry these beautiful memories. And when I go back to Australia, actually Australian Korean ambassador uh, to Australia is very um, nervous about me traveling everywhere because he thinks that I'm not very The former Korean ambassador to Australia has just visited CEU last week. Ah, oh, yes. 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 Head of the Korea Foundation. Yes, yes. Network is closed. Well, Kim Sam was an Australian ambassador, yeah, you know, right. and then yeah. before that he was Yonsei University uh, yeah, international yeah. relations professor. Well, he knows that I am <coughs> off the record. I Everything is good. Yes. Uh, well, it, put it this way. Um, I don't dis um, deny that I actually my uh, work is on uh, Parkinson's father's dictator's Korean model of development. So by the time when I was doing her father's policy, the development of strategies and policies, uh, nobody did in Korea. And my colleagues in Korean Korea used to say, "How do you do it?" Then I used to say, what do you mean by how I do it? What are you referring to? Then they would say, if we do what you do, we will be ostracized in our own land. We will never be able to teach anywhere. So why? And then, see, then they say, because the what you are really talking about is just so deep and just expose everything. But I'm not doing that for pure sake of you were criticizing it. What I said about this Korean model, Park Jong-hee's Korean style development was, as much as it has a contradiction and problem, there's no denial that tomorrow I have to deliver um, another lecture on developmentalism. And the question is, can we do develop democratically? Answer is, I'm so sorry to say this, very bluntly, not really exactly. Look at India. India had been a democratic country, and India had been really, when you go to Korea, and I'm India right now, is I'm in burgeoning, so we are looking at India with a different eyes. But in practice, even in even household, after the Korean War, the country was terribly poor. Then somebody has to make a decision. If you only have got a bag of um, grain, 
and you have to survive your whole eight member or ten member family has to survive the one bad throw of rain. Somebody between mommy or daddy has to make a decision. So the question is, are we going to survive or are we going to eat today or tomorrow and the rest of the days we die? That's where really somebody has to play the role. Developmentalism doesn't really come into this democracy. It, it, it sounds very, I mean, uh, sort of radical. I don't mean that if you, if you want to do a developed country, then you have to have a really authoritarianism only. I'm not saying it. But at the same time, I am saying, let's not just bluntly criticize this development uh, behind that there's authoritarian tactics. Korean model was su spectacularly successful. When you look at it, you can't help yourself not to uh, feel impressed about it. Because I, family, personally, my family had to, I was victimized. So the reason I had to go to Australia as a university student was not because I just was supposed to be going down there. I was a student leader, and uh, I was told that uh, unless I hide somewhere, that I would be very dangerous. So I was uh, told that I would go to Australia, but I didn't know where Australia was. Uh, I landed there. So this is now, I lived in Australia for a longer period than I lived in Korea. And so, in a way, my family is a victim of Park Jong-un's authoritarian development. So when I was writing this uh, book and uh, see these uh, US archival materials and South Korean materials, and I, there were so many days I wept and wept and wept because I resented it so utterly. But the thing here is I can't deny the fact that extraordinary Learning and extraordinary discipline. The South Korean model of development worked so spectacularly because it is extraordinary, stage by stage, planning and discipline. And the whole nation had discipline. And this is why I am saying this, this woman's, today's the popularity, largely is due to her father. This, look at this map. Here, this is where the previous two progressive presidents was, um, particularly in this part. Um, and so we were expecting it will be a more majority of them are yellow, and not in this. And actually, this part and this part was, for the first time in South Korea's history, just entirely poor people gave vote for conservative party. Why? Because they haven't forgotten what their um, Parker's father did to them. And yet, when you go to the countryside, all undereducated people, all the people are still whipping like mad and say, um, we, we owe, not only myself, my family owes to this, today's glory to dead man. So whatever you do, I am for you. That is the how. It's, it's like the 21st century of a new cult, cultism. And I thought personally, that's it, that's it. But in this campaign, she demonstrated a new dimension. That is her own strength of leadership and her determination. This is why I personally think this coming December election will be far more unpredictable and unless progressive camp comes with a radically different strategy, so far this status quo won't work, and this man or this man won't work. I couldn't possibly, I mean, personally say, this man, even five of these men comes together, they couldn't um, compute this one. Thank you so right. much. Thank you.